Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching the BAM Political Vigilante, bringing the truth to the citizens of Gotham. This is the People's Channel, ladies and gentlemen, the best and smartest fans in the internet. So, um, I'm, I, I mean, I almost never do videos. The whole YouTube space, especially the indie media space of this show is talking. Did you see what this person said about this person? It's, it's, it's high school and it's nonsense. So I, I really, but I want to talk about the attack on, on Cornell West. Cornell West has been severely targeted by the democratic establishment because he's a threat. And now he's targeted by Jimmy Dore, which I'm no longer a part of that show. I haven't been on that show in two years. Um, we had multiple disagreements. Uh, and now that show is going, he's gone so far right wing. I, I, it's, it's actually, it's being associated with that show has cost me money. Um, and I don't want to be a part of it. When I was a part of the, you know, Five years ago, when I was on that show and it had a, ha a heavy anti-war message and Medicare for all, I was really proud to be a part of the show. Now I, I am so not a part of that at all, no way, shape, or form. And the recent interview that that was done with Dr. West, you know, and I'm watching this Jimmy read this like he's got this piece of paper and he's just bah, 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 and he's not he's not even it's not even an interview or a conversation he had this pre-read statement like i don't know who's writing for a show anymore i noticed that the show definitely changed when jim earl and ron placone who were both writers for the show left that's very noticeable both ideologically politically and comedically so i don't know who wrote that but it was really and you know what the core of all this is Jimmy reached out to the Cornell West campaign and said, I'd love to work on your campaign. And when they said no, Jimmy got mad. This is, this is, this is what he's done. He take he makes everything and takes it personal. And that's not what I got into this space for. I got into this space because I wanted to fix things. And I don't think the indie left YouTube space is capable of fixing anything. It's pretty, it's pretty petty and ridiculous now. And and, mo and if you look at the list of people that are no longer working with the Jimmy Dore show, it's all like people that are still like true lefties and everyone that's still around them just seem like click chasers or I don't know what, I don't know what they're doing. Um, that interview was unreal. And Jimmy was like minimizing. Jimmy's a rich white guy. He owns two houses. He's got over a million followers, which means he's making probably a high seven figure income. If you have a million followers, you know, you have, if you have a six figure following on YouTube, you probably have a six figure income. If you have a seven figure following, you probably have a seven figure income. If you have a five figure following, you probably have a five figure income. <laughs> so, um, it was just so, I'm not surprised to, for two reasons. One, one of the reasons I, I, I stopped being a part of the Jimmy Dore show was in the summer of 2021, when he basically said it was okay that, that um, Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted. I was like, what? The Jimmy Dore show literally was a heavy anti-cop, critical of the police department, critical of their jackboot tactics. And then he, Jimmy was literally quoting Blue Lives Matter talking points. It was like, wow. And I know someone who was working on a show that had an argument with him about that. And Jimmy said, I've never been wrong, which is like his out of control ego. So this is all about his ego. Um, Cornell West didn't want him on his campaign. So Jimmy's like, no, RFK kisses Jimmy's ass. So he likes RFK. And in that interview, he was a little hard on RFK about RFK's horrible stance on Israel. But RFK has a bunch of other horrible stances that Jimmy's soft on. Tulsi Gabbard kissed Jimmy's ass. And he, she's off. I mean, she. I did videos on and I took a ton of shit. When I brought on this guy that, that showed all these very distinct ties to Hindu nationalism. And there's this whole group of people that just, whatever Jimmy says, Jimmy pro, Jimmy like Tulsi, me like Tulsi. Jimmy pro man, you know, no, no mandate, me no mandate. Jimmy no vaccine, me no vaccine. They just follow whatever he says because he's got more clicks. And some of those people used to be on my show as regular guests and they made a choice and it's obvious. Graham's show is way smaller, has 
you know, is only 10% of the audience, less than 10% of the audience of Jimmy show. So I'm going to go on Jimmy show and agree with whatever Jimmy says. There's nobody or in Jimmy Dore's world that disagrees with him. Nobody. And you can make all your theories all you want. You haven't worked closely with this guy. You haven't known him for 30 years. So you don't know what you're talking about. I do. People that have worked with him do. He has no one around them that disagrees with him. Nobody. I just saw Ron, Ron Pagone, a very good friend of mine. I met him through Jimmy, and, I, and I'm grateful for that. Ron and I have disagreements and debates all the time. They're so healthy. I love talking to Ron Pagone because Ron doesn't try to just jam his, I'm Graham. We never have those kind of, I'll say something and Ron will go, I don't know, Graham. And he'll bring up these points. And oh, I see your point. And sometimes it's like, well, I'll agree to disagree. We've had a couple of those. And it's like so cool. And I have such respect for that. And I would never have people around me that just agree and kiss my ass. But this is what happens when you go through 12-step recovery is you have to make a searching and fearless moral inventory of yourselves. And when you're drinking and doing drugs every day, you're not capable of that. So this is what this is about. Let's get that clear. You know, when Bernie didn't want to come on Jimmy's show, Jimmy turned on Bernie. And there's much to be critical, but, but it's, it, you got to understand it's all about that ego. If Cornell West would have said, yeah, Jimmy, you can work on my campaign. Jimmy would be banging the drum for Cornell West. And that's why he keeps talking about your advisors, your advisors. That's Jimmy saying, Jimmy basically says, I really want to be invited to this party. Everyone in that party is awesome. I got to be in that party. And when he's not invited, he goes, everyone in that party sucks. I hate them. He does that time and time again. He does that time and time again. Um, but the real thing that's offensive here, and this is this is a problem in America, and it's a problem in politics, debating politics, is there's this lack of two things can be true at the same time. And if you notice, the people that minimize January 6th, the people that, that minimize the white nationalists in January 6th, and the people that minimize Kyle Rittenhouse are all like typically white people and white males. Dr. West grew up in this country in the 60s and 70s. Dr. West was alive and was in a, you know, a young adult, a child and a young adult at a time when black people could not ride on the bus. Now, this is this thing where two things can exist at once. Let's talk about January 6th for a second. Yeah, but the FBI, of course the FBI was involved. Did the FBI, I mean, we, we know for certain the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, those two guys were FBI informants, the heads of those organizations. So did the FBI help orchestrate that? I'm sure that they did. But they're also a bunch of heavily armed, racist, white nationalists who are dangerous in this country. And the fact that the Democratic Party says, oh my God, the white nationalists is not a reason to minimize that. It's like if the Democratic Party's like, oh my God, there's a hurricane coming. Are you gonna go, oh, the fuck, stupid neoliberals? And I've traveled this country and white nationalists who are heavily armed are dangerous and they're scary, just like black and Latino gangs. Does that mean every black and Latino person is in a gang? Of course not. Does that mean every white person that's even right leaning is a, is a Klan member with a gun? No, of course not. But that group is dangerous. Armed groups of people with insane ideologies are dangerous. You notice the FBI, if they wanted to get a bunch of hippie yoga, yogi, yoga students or yogis as they're called, vegan smoothing drinking yogis to go get guns and attack the Capitol, they'd have a hard time doing that because that group is really not aligned with guns and violence and they're not going to do that. So you have these white nationalists that are heavily armed and they're dangerous and the FBI infiltrated and the Democratic Party is a bunch of lying idiots. And so are the Republicans. All of these things can exist at one time. And it's such an oversimplification. When January 6th happened, I remember debating this with several YouTubers, Jason Burmis, Pasta from Convo Couch, white males who didn't think it was that big of a deal. Because when white males who don't understand this and don't have never read a history book. I had two uncles that fought Nazis in World War II and fascists in World War II. So to minimize that is dangerous. 
to minimize the authoritarianism of the Democratic Party is also dangerous. When when the vote any blue will do crowd will be like, oh, Joe Biden. No, no. Authoritarianism can come in many forms. But when people were showing up at the Capitol with six million wasn't enough shirts and Camp Auschwitz shirts and they had AR-15s. And then like, I remember like people with like Jason Burmis and Poss. Yeah, but there was old people who just believed in our country. Okay. I'm not worried about the old couple that voted for Trump because they just believed in America. I'm worried about the guy with the Nazi shirt and the AR-15 because that guy's willing to do damage. We sent young men to Europe in World War II to kill Nazis. That was their primary objective. And now we're letting them run free. So you can't minimize that. And it's dangerous to minimize that. And one of the things Dr. West said was, wow, I didn't realize you were such a Trumper. And Jimmy lost his, went nuts, right? And Jimmy just kept screaming and got Dr. West, one of the nicest, most easygoing guys in the world to lose his cool. That's what Jimmy's very good at. That's what alcoholics, the alcoholics will, are very good at getting under people's skin. Trust me on this. I grew up with an alcoholic father. I've been around them. I know. I know when someone's in their disease, how, how, what they do. And again, anyone in, in, in was telling me in the chat or online, you weren't there. I was there in Austin, Texas, when Jimmy was screaming at his staff for not bringing him in a, a martini. And what, what, what's my responsibility, what my part in it is, I didn't speak up enough about that behavior. I, I, I let it slide. I did what someone who grew up in an alcoholic home tends to do. I was in a little bit of denial about it. I was the one who said, well, but his message of anti-war and, you know, ah, Jimmy's not perfect and he's got a strong will, but he's really trying to do the right thing here. So, um, so I let that slide and I feel, I feel very responsible for that. And that's why now I have to, to speak up. Um, the, the YouTube channels that spend every other video is this person said, this person said, this person. There's a reason I didn't even put his name in the title of this video and of the live stream, because I know putting his name in there will actually get more views, be it from his audience or people that hate him. I don't care what his cult following thinks of me. And then the people who spend their whole time on, online hating on Jimmy Dore, I don't care what they think of me either. What really actually matters to me is the message of Dr. West. And if I had to vote, if the only choices were Dr. West, RFK, or Marianne Williamson, it'd be Dr. West all day, all night, all night long. If my only choices are Joe Biden, Donald Trump, RFK, or Marianne Williamson, I'm going to write in Jesse Ventura again. Because I'm not voting for Marianne or RFK, numerous reasons. She's just trying to sell books. And RFK is just, he's just chasing whatever contrarian view thinks he, oh, Bitcoin's big, I'll go Bitcoin. Like, and I'm a Bitcoin guy and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like anyone. So, but let's talk, let's see what Dr. West and the thing that I, I think the good thing to come out of this is finally Dr. West and Chris Hedges, two men I have the utmost respect for. Chris Hedges has been on the show. I'd love to have Dr. West on the show. I have a bunch of questions I'd like to ask Dr. West. I wouldn't be doing gotcha questions that I scripted out. I, I'd ask him, you know, questions on like, what would you do with Bitcoin and crypto regulation? What would you do about Epstein? Would you actually prosecute these people? These are the subjects that I care about. Spell out for us what your Green New Deal looks like. How are you going to deal with the, the, the partisan politics and fight these parties? Because I love what you're saying, Dr. West, ideologically, but the reality is there's two very corrupt parties that can crush people. And how would you do that? Those are the kind of questions I would ask. But let's see what Dr. West said. He was just on Jordan Sheridan's show status quo. And, but I, I hope Hedges and Dr. West now realize how toxic Jimmy really is. And he, Jimmy has gone right wing. He said transphobic things. I mean, he, he, he just, and no one's in his corner. And again, the people that were saying two years ago, Jimmy, I don't agree with you. They've gone. They had arguments with him. They're not on his show anymore. That's not an open point of view. That's not, it's not, and look, it's cost me money disagreeing with Jimmy. If I just, if I just, all I cared about was money, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with him. But I'm not going to do that. I am only going to talk about what I believe in. And I don't, if you don't believe me or you don't like me, whatever, I'm saying what I believe in. 
no one's in my ear. Okay. And I know Jimmy was getting money from Peter Allard, who is a billionaire that was paying some indie, he was supposedly a progressive. He was paying Jimmy what I was told was five grand a month. And then I heard this Peter Allard guy during the whole vaccine thing in 2021 told at several shows that he was paying, hey, I need you to push this anti-vaccine stuff. And several of the shows said, I don't want your money more. We're done. And Jimmy kept taking his money. That's my understanding. So there's a lot of stuff that's suspect here. And it's funny. I always go, oh, Graham's a sell out to big pharma. No, I'm not. I've not gotten a penny from them. Because again, I live in a world where two things can exist at once. Is there a lot about big pharma that I don't like and don't trust? Absolutely. Does that mean all medicines are bad? No. Should we be studying people? All We should be collecting all the data with the vaccine. Jimmy just kept talking about the vaccine and the mandates, right? We should be studying all the data. The vaccines that are harming people, we should be collecting all that data. We should be collecting who's getting sick from COVID, what they're eating, what they're blood type is, we should be collapsed, collecting all of this data. That's how science works. You collect data. And from that data, then you can go, oh, these are the trends we're noticing. This age group, this demographic, this socio, whatever, this people who eat these foods, they're more susceptible to this. We should discuss people who've been, been injured from the vaccine. Absolutely. We shouldn't sweep that under the rug, nor should we be sweeping under the rug long COVID. I think the Biden administration and the Trump administration have been horrible, their handling of COVID. And science and viruses don't give a shit if you're red or blue or you're on rumble or you, whatever. So let's watch this. Um, and I have the utmost respect for Dr. Cornell West. And again, Jimmy used to play a video of Dr. West going, Jimmy Dore's a national treasure. So when Dr. West was like saying Jimmy was great, Jimmy loved Dr. West. When Dr. West said, I don't want Jimmy on my campaign because he's too mm, whatever, then Jimmy goes after him. See, I'd love to be on Dr. West's campaign. And if Dr. West people came to me or Dr. West called me up, he doesn't have my number, but if he called me up and said, Graham, I love you, but you're a little too much, you're a little too much of a hothead and you talk too much about Epstein or Bitcoin or whatever, I'd say, Dr. West, I appreciate you being honest with me. I support you no matter what. That's what I would say. I wouldn't go after him because he didn't invite me to his party. <laughs> so let's watch this. No, we know. I mean, Brother Jimmy's anti-racist and his sensibilities and so forth. There's no doubt about that. He's been very helpful to a whole host of black folk. I didn't, as you can tell, I didn't like his attitude at all. I didn't like his tone. Over time, we started with a certain respect, but it tended to uh, a decline. Let me just start right here. Dr. West starts this with respecting Jimmy, saying, we know Jimmy's anti-racist, Brother Jimmy. This is Dr. West, who, again, refers to the KKK as my brothers in the Ku Klux Klan. I wouldn't, I don't have the heart to refer, I mean, I don't have that. I'm, I would never refer to the Klan as my brothers in the Ku Klux Klan. Dr. West who knows more about racism and Jim Crow laws and systemic racism than any white person will ever know, especially a white guy that lives in the Hollywood Hills and has a second house in Pasadena, who's making a seven figure income. Jimmy makes more money than Dr. West, I would guarantee. He still comes out of the gate with respect and dignity and Jimmy was disrespectful. Dr. West is a better man than I am. Because anyone that talks that kind of mess about me online, we're going to see each other in person. And if you went to private schools paid for with Clinton money, I know you don't know how to fight. But let's listen to Dr. West. After that, and I don't have any any patience for the most folk, the folk who just kind of pontificate to tell you I'm the coach, I'm the advisor, this is what you ought to do. Who's advising you? Well, I think for myself, but I shouldn't have to say that because you think for yourself. Ba, 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 ba. But I use the Watson example as an extreme example because we know white supremacy cuts so deep that you have a choice of either conforming or hitting it head on with your class politics. You don't give up on class just because you're talking about white supremacy. And if you reduce talk about white supremacy or male supremacy or transphobia or homophobia just to identity politics, then you're missing the point. Identity politics is a neoliberal 
project that's a class war against poor and working people. But if you have a class informed, class written politics that hits white supremacy head on, male supremacy head on, that's not narrow identity politics. That's what it is to be a decent and moral person concerned about structures of dominance. White supremacy deeply overlaps with forms of patriarchy and forms of capitalist exploitation of workers and so forth. But it also has its own relative autonomy, too. And so when he says, well, you know, you can't, uh, you got to talk only about economic issues. That's why Bernie took off. And that's the only way you're going to take off. And then in the end, just say, I'm a loser. I said, well, okay, brother, you go too far at that point. Nah, wait, 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 nah. I, I, I know we're supposed to be on the same side here, but if you can talk about Tucker Parker, if you can talk about Brother Tucker and Tucker when he talks about George Floyd, first thing he talks about is his record. What about the suffering, brother? What about the police committing this vicious lynching and crime? So Tucker might have some populist dimensions. Wonderful. Love Tucker. Been in Africa with him. But if he was going to look at these various cases, same would be true with trans and women. If he looks at them and can't identify with their suffering, I've got a critique and an indictment. He said, well, you'll never win. You never win. Well, what, what, what do you mean by winning here? If winning is on the way to Tom Watson in his latter stage, I'm not headed there. Ever. And, of course, I will never ask for anybody's permission, white, male, whatever they are as to whether I ought to be raising my voice against vicious forms of white supremacy. And it's not simply because of skin pigmentation. <laughs> and that is why Jimmy had a scripted thing where he just kept interrupting. Because if you let Dr. West speak, you go, like I just did, I'm sure most of you just went, dang, he's right. He's right on this and this. Because Dr. West has been fighting this for 40 or 50 years. When Jimmy and I were just knucklehead young comics in Chicago, trying to get stage time, talking about dick jokes and getting drunk and chasing girls after shows, Dr. West was fighting this issue. I'm, I'm man enough to admit Dr. West is smarter than I am, and he's been through way more than I am. And I'll ask him some questions, but I would never be disrespectful to Dr. West. And look, he even said, I went to Africa with Brother Tucker. And he just talked about how Tucker misses it. And that's a typical thing, especially in America, when it doesn't happen directly to you, you don't think it's that big of a deal. And this is the other thing that's so disappointing. Jimmy used to get this on every level. So the question to be asked is... When Jimmy was talking about how people getting beat up by the police and people minimizing saying, oh, George Floyd had a record, Jimmy used to say, like, what about the economic things that created a system that created a place where George Floyd ha has a record? If we had a real democratic socialist safety network, George Floyd wouldn't need to have a record. He, he never. But when you have a for profit prison system that unfairly targets young black males. Jimmy used to say all those things. So the question is, was Jimmy lying when he was like a Bernie populist? Or is he lying now? Or this is this who he really is now, this right-wing guy? Or is he just going wherever the wind blows, wherever the clicks are? So I, I'm sorry. I defer to Dr. West. And he makes, again, what did I just say at the top of this video? More than one thing can exist at the same time. That's what Dr. West is saying. Systemic racism is real. Fighting white supremacy head on is doc is real. And we can talk about the social. And I'm, I'm Dr. West, I'm sure knows way more about Fred Hampton than I or Jimmy does or anybody. That's what Fred Hampton did. He went at the rednecks and said in, in Hillbilly Harlem in Chicago and said, racism is a capitalist. That's how you come at this. Jimmy wants him to just put it to the side, and say it's no big deal. That's the identity politics of the liberal Leo liberal parties. And I'm glad now. I'm glad now. I'm glad now. Because I've been, it's like, oh, Graham's the crazy. Graham's all mad at Jimmy. No, no, I saw this. I saw this. And I saw it's all based on ego. And this is the ego of an alcoholic. I saw it up close. Just like Dr. West has seen racism up close.
So I would love it if Dr. West comes on this show. If he never comes on this show, I'm still going to vote for the man. And when a man that articulate, and, and when he said, I don't need anyone's permission, like Jimmy was, it was, he, he's, I didn't like his attitude. Like Jimmy just starts disrespecting Dr. West and had to talk over him. When you know your position is wrong, it's that thing. If I talk faster and louder, that means I'm more right. That's when you listen to Dr. West talk, how can you not go? And, and that's the man I want Dr. West talking in front of a room full of white conservative Trump supporters because he will get some of them to go, dang, this guy's right. Because Dr. West comes from a place of respect. Jimmy comes from a place of ego. Ego stands for edging God out or higher power or spirituality or universe, whatever you want to call it. Atheists can call it a power greater than themselves, which could be the sun, the waves. I'm a surfer. The waves are a power greater than myself. So hats off to Dr. West for standing tall and hats off to him for defending himself. And, you know, this is, this is what, I'm just glad the truth's coming out, man, because when you grow up in an alcoholic abusive home and you're the one who calls it out, you're the one who's targeted. Yo, you're, and when you, it's like a cult, someone who leaves a cult and says, this is, oh my God, this is a cult. What that person is never like, yay. It's always like they're attacked by the other cult members, by the cult leader. Right. It's like when people say oh, Bitcoin's a cult, Bitcoin's not a cult. There's no leader. So when you are in an abusive family dynamic or a cult when you speak up about the cult you get attacked i've been attacked for two years for speaking up about this and i've been quiet on a lot of it i finally like a couple weeks ago put it on twitter why i left and now everyone's starting to see it now everyone's starting to see it and i've had to do this other times in my life i had to get a restraining order against my my ex-girlfriend who I helped get a job at the Hollywood Improv and the Hollywood Improv won't fire her. I worked for the Hollywood Improv for 20 years, never had a problem. There's no me too allegations. I'm not that guy. This girl been working there for like a year and they just believe her over me. Whatever. So Hats off to Dr. West. Good for you. And I hope the, the, the people that are backing Dr. West and, and want to see the world a better place can just be done with this kind of culty, me, 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 selfish behavior, yelling. That's why Dr. West, I think, is, is the best chance at bridging the divides in this country. And some people are just going to yell at him and read pre-prepared statements and cut him off and talk, talk, blah, 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 right? And those people, you can't do anything about them. It's called detach with love. So, and I'm, I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the truth is coming out. I'm glad the truth is coming out because, because, you know, what is that? Character is who you are when no one's watching. And then they say, um, character is not created, it's revealed. You know, crisis creates character. You see who somebody is in a crisis. And I see it as a Red Cross volunteer. I just saw it when I was in Maui working at the shelters. When whenever there's a disaster, you see several, two things happen. The community comes together. I've seen it in all over the United States. And in Maui, it was like, next level because Hawaii has such a community and Maui and they're all islands. And so everybody knows each other and it's very like stand together and it's beautiful. And then you see people take advantage of it. People trying to buy the land from Maui. It happens in a crisis and you see some people just go, there's a crisis. I got to take care of me. And then some people go, there's a crisis. How do we all help each other out? How do we help each other out? Character is not created, it's revealed. And Dr. West's character, we already knew what it was. He was consistent in who he is. 
and the interviewer, rich white guy, telling a guy that grew up in the 60s and 70s in America that white nationalism is just identity politics. Make your own choice. Make your own choice. Thanks for supporting our show, everybody. Super Chats are back. I've been censored by big tech for already... Um, for two and a half years, we're finally back. And uh, yeah, go to GrahamElwood.com. We've got a lot of cool stuff we're working on. And, uh, you know, if somebody's drinking or sobriety is making your life unmanageable, I would go to alanon.org. And if you grew up in an alcoholic family, I'd go to adultchildrenofalcoholics.org. Great websites. And if you have a substance abuse problem, I go to alcoholicsanonymous.org. All great websites, great resources. Thanks, everybody. Follow the money, connect the dots, and get the truth. That's how you make Gotham great again. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. <laughs>